Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice Of moral ambiguity They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Hello and welcome to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast I am your host and Dungeon Master, Kevin I'm going around the table, Blake I'm Blake and I'll be playing Juliet, the Dragonborn Eldritch Knight slash Wizard. And Hannah. I'm Hannah, and I'll be playing Talia, the Human Rogue. And John. Hello. I play Lunadas, evil monk. Well, they call him evil. He's 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 a good guy, I think. It's all a matter of perspective, really. Yes. And Shane. That's me playing Alexander, the Human Bard. And joining us this week, Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. I'll be playing Vikala, a paladin drow of law. All right, the last time on Dungeons and Abacles episode, you guys found yourselves outside the Fate Gate. You decided to, well, you didn't decide to. Um, Alinidas had hidden up in a tree waiting in ambush for some high elves to come near this scene where they had just previously dispatched another elf. Uh, two high elves showed up. You were able to take them out pretty quickly, but not before one of them let off this magic device that shot a flare up into the air. Um, after you killed them, you decided that you probably needed to leave the area because there may be more high elves come to investigate the flare. Um, you moved up to the Fey Gate. You split up. Um, at that point, Lunados headed off uh, towards the stream and basically shit the bed on his stealth check <laughs> as he plopped into the river. Um, two high elves came down from the palisades to investigate what was going on. They spotted Lunados and attacked him. He was able to jump out of the stream and run for the woods, and they gave chase. Um, during that time, Nifron and Talia climbed on top of this waterfall and took out four high elf archers. And uh, around that time, that's when um, Juliet, Juliet and Alexander. Yeah, Juliet and Alexander uh, entered the battle. Um, uh, Alexander also shit the bed on his stealth check. Oh yeah, or, he did. Yeah. Be fair. <laughs> you mean survive check? The not being seen check, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, his his survival survive check wasn't that great either. Uh, Alunidas was able to set the distraction fire, um, but he jumped into the palisades and was stuck there taking damage for three rounds and was basically out of the fight <laughs> for most of it. Um, Talia was able to fly down and get into the battle. So the battle ensues, and two of you were taken down. Um, that was Alexander and I believe Alunidas. Were you taken yep. out as well? Yep, toward the end of the fight. After uh, you went down, the rest of the party was able to defeat the rest of the elves outside of this waterfall, and they were able to revive you. That is where you find yourselves now. Let's see. I am... I don't know. Am I conscious or not? Uh, you would have been conscious at this point because I think um, everybody did a... Uh, somebody did a medicine check on you and uh, brought you back. Okay. So we, we like... We, we need to get through the, the gate thing, thing, guys, now, quickly, now, as fast as we can. So, as you're licking your wounds here, uh, everybody give me a perception check. 12. 21. Blackjack. 15. Oh, goodness, sorry, 15. The yep. perfectly average roll. I don't know why you expected me to succeed on the roll. I haven't made a single skill roll, man. 
That is such a lie. You are a liar. Liar oh. face with liar pants. Give me an example. Just last time you succeeded at something. I don't remember what, but you did succeed. All right, so um, as you're licking your wounds here, um, the sound of the waterfall here is pretty deafening, but Alexander and Talia, you're going to catch something out of the corner of your eye to the south here in the tree line. I'm going to point and be like, hey, I'm too short to see what that is. What is that? And uh, as you point, you're going to see this... uh, figure come walking out of the tree line down here to the south and uh, Anna can you describe uh, what you look like I look like uh, taller than usual large frame drow cast in dark steel and a large dark steel greatsword with a very long white hair wearing the amulet of love and quite a few endorments made of cloth and a wintry cloak. I don't think I could see over the palisade either. <laughs> uh, it's only like five and a half feet tall. Pretty sure that's taller than me. Nope, that's exactly how tall I am. So my eyes are below the top. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> everyone else is... Well, Juliet and Alexander noticed this woman striding out of the forest looking really imposing. Tommy um, and I are wondering what the hell's going on. Hold on, it looks like we've got one more. This one kind of looks, uh, different. Different how? No, it's, it's a drow. So probably not on the same side as the high elves. Do we want to see what she wants? It, he? Probably she, it's a drow. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. She's coming towards us, so we have no choice in the matter. Unless we want to run, which I I think we outnumber her. Uh, So at least we got that on our side. In our current condition, I don't think we do. But um, I'm going to go start fetching the cart and horses. Uh, Around this time, uh, Nifron hears your conversation and his ears picks up at the word growl. And he's going to come and walk over where you're standing and uh, looks down towards the tree line where you're looking. And you hear him mutter under his breath, Great. Um, is that a real great or a sarcastic great? He's just going to look at you <laughs> and just I like know. almost give you like this eye roll. Well, well uh, I'm kind of the face, well, not really the face of the party, but I seem to represent the party, so I'll have a chat with this person. And uh, if you hear a scream, well, then he, one of us, so. And Nifro's going to say, I'll accompany you. Julia is going to make her way out of the palisade, keeping her distance from the newcomer. Just kind of give her a look up and down. Um, hi there. Elizabeth. Well, I definitely did not expect a lizard to come and greet me. I've seen the flare, and I've handled a few of the high elves on the way. So, uh, you've killed a couple of these high elves, huh? Sounds like, uh, they might be on the same side for once. Who's your master, or are you with that, you know, multi-legged freak? Multi-legged free. That's out of character. But still, wow. Uh, the 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 lady with a lot of legs, or does she have a lot of legs? Or th- I guess she likes spiders a lot, right? Are you speaking of lock? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. That's the one. Um, there defile the name of my goddess once more. And being a lizard will be the last of your worries. Nifron's okay. going to chime in okay. and say, I'm sure she meant no offense. There's only so much you can expect from these inferior races. You know. Yep, she's a drow. Nifron's going to uh, look at you and say, 
And what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? Well, I'm sure you're well aware who sent me. I can uh, guess. Yeah. Kayla sends her regards. Oh, wonderful. Uh, are you here to keep tabs on us or to, like, eliminate us? Because, I, I don't know, I kind of got the feeling that she was okay with both. <laughs> If I wanted you dead, you don't seem in a shape to fight, so, you know, you can keep your uh, head for now. That is uh, awful kind of you, but since we're not, you know, here to kill each other, uh, maybe I can introduce you to the rest of us, since you're, well, I guess kind of on our side that would be wonderful I am getting peckish so well uh, we do have food I don't know if it's what you're used to with the what do you eat down there anyway food some reason I thought it was like candied spider legs and beetles and mushrooms. I don't know. Sorry. I At that point, knife is going to elbow you in the ribs. Don't be foolish. We don't eat spiders. They're sacred. Oh, I, I guess I should have guessed that. Um, Juliet is going to turn around and call out to the uh, people. Alexander, uh, Talia, Alunadas. You guys can come out now. It's it's a okay and safe. Uh, we have a visitor who is actually a friend. You're gonna hear Nifron say or mutter under his breath, "Safe is a relative term." Yeah, shouldn't we be getting into the fake gate about now so that you know others don't discover this and then kill us? And I don't know how long it'll take me to come back, but I have the the, the props ready, the, the cart and all the horses when I do finally show up. And, uh, do I see them? Whenever Kevin says I show up. Um, so you went off after the, the cart and horses, so these were probably a good half mile back, so it's going to take you a while to get there and then move them back probably about um, 30 minutes or so. Okay. So by the time they're done with their conversation is when I'll show up. All right. Okay. So uh, I, I guess welcome. It's it's nice to meet you. Uh, what did you say your name was again? My name is Vikala Alin Matur, but you may call me Vic. How, how about Vicky? Uh, you test my patience. Okay. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so, my name is Juliet, this is Nifron, Talia, Alexander, and where did Alunadas go? I think he went to go grab the horses. A child. We don't look very healthy. Well, I did just kill a bunch of people and they tried to kill me back. Hey, uh, are you like a, one of those religious types with the, the magic that you know, cures people. I mean, maybe you could help out. Uh, well, I I think you should help out uh, Talia. She yeah, of course, to me. does not seem very healthy. Come here, child. Talia's gonna kind of Talia's gonna look forehead. back and forth, just like uh, guys. Is this should I like? before she walks forward. Nifron's gonna give you a nod. For some reason, that's comforting. It shouldn't be, because it's Nifron, but it is. I put my uh, hand on Talia's head. By this unworthy sacrifice, by law, be healed. What are you, casting a spell or doing lay on hands? Uh, lay on hand, yeah. I was looking uh, how I can roll this on uh, roll 20. Uh, it's just a pull of uh, hit points, so it's whatever your hit points are, you can decide however many hit points out of that you want to give her. Um, hmm. I'm 
gonna restore 20. Um, thank you. Do you feel better, child? I, I do. Thank you for, for your help. Thank Lord. Hey, uh, just a, a quick question here. Um, you, you seem pretty devoted for a drow. Um, is the fact that we have male members here gonna be a problem, or...? Well, you are useful for my goddess, so I don't mind, even if you are dogs. See, guys, uh, you, you're safe because she's going to use you. Um, How comforting. I'm, I'm glad you think so. Um, Is Elena's back yet? Uh, we'll say at this point, um, he's going to be coming through these trees with your animals. Hey, guys. So, is she a friend? She looks like a friend. Hi, I'm Luno. And Elle. And yes. Isle. No. What else? Not an Isle. What else? What are you? What else? Oh, Even wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice to meet you. So, so racially wood elf, spiritually servant of ruin. <laughs> you planning to ride on these, by the way? Well, we normally do. <laughs> Boy, uh, <laughs> we have an extra. His name's Chimney. Talia's gonna, Talia's gonna pat, <laughs> pat Chimney's neck, like walk over and pat Chimney's neck. I, I'm gonna cast um, Fine Steed. Is that so good? Sure. I, uh, I lean down and say, Dear Wolf, show yourself for your master, Falak. And I summon um, my mount, which is a very large, black, smoky warp. Oh, um, hmm. Hey, I guess you're going to ride that thing? Isn't that kind of dangerous? Talia's going to look at Julia and be like, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> he is... Uh, my trusty steed since I was a child. It took a while to learn how to handle one of these. Well, it's certainly an impressive specimen, I must say. Do you wanna pet it? Yes. <laughs> Tali's gonna run over. <laughs> you might lose your hand. Work. It's a very friendly work, by the way. It'll take better ups. Talia's gonna take a second to just scritch it if it lets her, and then uh, suggest again, like, should we should we take a rest now, or should we eat? Like, what, what, what are we doing? Let's uh, catch our breath after that fight, I think. And then go through the Fey Gate, get ourselves lost in the wilds in case... Well, when they eventually start coming looking for us. Nifron's going to speak up and say, I think we've taken out the majority of the forces here. And if she took out the other people who were investigating the flares, I think we may have time for a short rest. Yeah, besides, Vikala said she was a little hungry, so, uh, you know, bonding over food never hurt. I have vegan hot dogs. Shut the, the fuck up. There's no such thing. <laughs> What's a vegan? I'm vegan. I thought you were just eat grasses and trees. Uh, you're a landis. I'm also an elf. There, I can be multiple things. I think it's canon has been established that you're vegetarian and not vegan. Okay. Well, I still have vegan hot dogs, so I'll go ahead and fry them up in vegetable oil. <laughs> All right. So, uh, is everybody taking a short rest? Yes. Yep, yep. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can spend uh, your hit die as you see fit. Um, I'm actually a bit new to uh, Paladins. Um, do I get Leon Hands points back on short yes, rest or I only long rest? 
I'm not sure if it's on short rest or long rest. Hold on. Same. Do you have a description? I don't, uh, I don't see it. Lay on hands, replenish can... on a long rest only. We can okay. use up to three of our hit die, yeah? You can use, yeah, I think up to three, right? Half yeah, half, I think, on the short yeah rest. half your... Okay, I rolled one, so I'm going to roll the second two now. Shane, do you want to do Song of Rest? Sure. And then that allows uh, everybody to gain one hit die for free, right? I'll look it up. Yeah, so I'll use Song of Rest so everybody's able to gain an extra 1d6 to a uh, hit dice that they use. So that uses up an additional 1d6 of the hit dice we actually have? I, yeah, I mean, we would assume, I would assume that it's on top of it. Said this, yeah. It, yeah, that, this does not use the hit die. He just plays music and we get better because our spirits are listed. Okay, gotcha. So, how many, how, do we roll? How many hit die do we roll and what do we get back? <laughs> you can roll as many hit dice as you want to recover that much HP. Uh, you can roll up to rather half your level. So you can roll. Well, up I've to already done dice. that. I'm saying, what do we get from. Shane's song. And extra 1d6. Uh, it looks like you already rolled. You got a 5, which is nice. Okay, so I get 5 in points back. Yep, additionally. But I'm now slightly more than half health. You've healed up. Now you're standing outside of this uh, this waterfall. What are you uh, going to do now? Let's go through into the Feywild. Yes. That sounds like it's totally not going to get us killed or anything. Alright, so... Uh, you approach the waterfall here and as you get closer the sound gets louder and louder and there's this this mist that has permeated the air here is almost like a um, a, a really heavy mist and, and drizzle on your skin and you can feel the water as it falls from this 70 foot height hitting the rocks and then you know particles splashing up and, and hitting you uh, as you get closer you are going to notice this faint bluish white glow that is coming from beneath the water and as you approach the banks here you're going to see directly um, below and probably about 10 feet out in front of the waterfall there appears to be this bluish white um, pool of light that is about 15 feet in diameter um, that is, is glowing beneath the surface of the water. You estimate probably about um, three or four feet down. So do we just go in there? Mm. Can I look under the water? Like, uh, my head? You can. I'm going to put my hood on and then so big, um, give me a, cloak. Give me an investigation check. All right, so that's a 17. You uh, stick your head into the water and then open your eyes and the, the, the cold from this water starts to seep through your skin and uh, you can feel like the, the current grab uh, your cloak and start pulling on it. But as you open your, your eyes, you look down into the water and about four feet down into the stream, you are going to see this pool of this shimmering uh, radiant light that appears to be on the the ground or the 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 bank or the under the the water the ground bed. the bed yes <laughs> uh, the water uh, the bed of the water there uh, is is shimmering with this uh, layer of this radiant light. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Do I have any knowledge what that is? Uh, give me a history check. Alright. So with a 17, from what you've been told of your mission here, and what you understand about um, the, the Fae and this area of uh, Fadel, you would think that this would be the portal um, that has been talked about that leads to the Feywild. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, 
uh, look back at the rest of the party and um, say, well, are you um, gonna jump in or are you waiting for an invitation? Well, let's try this. And Lundas is going to gently lead Buttercup down into the water with the girl. All right, give me a all animal horses hand- tied right behind her. All right, give me an animal handling check. Nine. <laughs> so you start leading this uh, Buttercup into the water here, and you get it to about um, three feet up on its uh, its haunches. And as you're trying to drag it towards this uh, gate, it's going to resist and pull back and try to, like, buck up. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay, Buttercup. It's fine. It's fine. Alina oh. asked, is it really necessary to take the entire cart into the Fade? How are we going to get back up? I don't know. He does have a point, you know. She, actually. But, um... Sorry. Yeah, I know. It's really hard to tell. They all look the same. She, but he, <laughs> the gender politics of horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Juliet in this case. Um, but I, I, I want to try and take the cart through because I don't want to leave it behind for the high elves to steal. They'll steal anything. They think they're better than everyone. And they're not. Also, it's got all our food. Oh, wow. Well, Wouldn't that make it just wet food? That's not good. That's like the opposite of what the, what they're trying to accomplish with keeping that food, you know, not wet. It's sealed away, probably. We don't have plastic. We have wax. Plastic hasn't been invented yet. Exactly. Magic plastic. Mastic. <laughs> I tell you what, I am just gonna dive in. You can take the card if you want. I didn't want it anyway, so, you know, if it gets stuck, that's on you. Your face. Uh, Vic, okay. don't you have crate food and water? Um, no, I have purifying. Oh, uh, okay. I will start walking into the water, uh, playing my bagpipes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, can't wait to hear what they can't... sound like when they get wet. Yeah, and thankfully, due to the the roar of the waterfall here, um, the bagpipes are somewhat muted. Can I use a uh, force to help push the horses in? Uh, what's the ability or spell? A brute force. Just oh, okay. Take, uh, <laughs> give, give me a <laughs> animal the horse hand. up, toss it in the water. <laughs> give me a, <laughs> a body slam the cart. Uh, give me an animal handling check. All right. It's a six. So uh, as you approach. Buttercup here, who's pulling the cart. Before you can even get to the horse, it like pulls away from you and bucks up. Horses. They're better as food than actual, you know. You eat gross. We don't have a lot of choices, you know. There's the plenty ground. of fungus down there. You know this. You Lundadas, try you... living on fungus for decades. I would, I would be happy to. After <laughs> we free you ruin access. Lundadas, you harvested to... dragon for food. No, we harvested it for parts to make use of it. Now that was not the dragon cats. turkey I saw being made. I didn't make it, somebody else made that. And you judge me for eating horses. Okay. At this point, Nifron is going to walk over <laughs> and grab a hold of the the horse of Buttercup. Try again. This time, I got a twelve. I mean, why? Uh, he got a fifteen. <laughs> okay. So he is going to grab a hold of these uh, the reins of Buttercup and smack this horse in the head and start pulling, and he is able to get it into the water, and um, you're going to see like the horse like the the water comes up to about its neck and then you just see it like lurch forward down with the cart and you're going to see the horse cart and nifron disappear under the water 
and belittled us because he was riding on the cart. That was dumb. <laughs> but now I'm in the Feywild, and unless everybody else untied their horses, I think the other horses are now stuck following the cart into the Feywild. I'm gonna jump in with my hood on. Swim. Okay, so <laughs> you see uh, Nifron, Buttercup, the cart, and the rest of the horses uh, being um, like after the cart goes down, you'll see the rest of the horses, since they're tied to the cart, start being dragged, and you see them like try to prevent it, and they start to panic. And then you see them slowly, one by one, go underneath the water. <laughs> and then you're going to see Vic um, jump in the water, and she is going to disappear. Um, Alexander, I guess you're going as well. And Juliet? Sure am. Um, I'm going to grab Abbott by the scruff and start to drag him towards the water. Okay, give me a uh, animal handling Strength check. check. He's bigger than she is. Set. So he starts <laughs> to whine, and he is, like, fighting back, and he does not want to get in the water because you're pulling on his uh, collar. I I'm going to be like, come on, Abbott, let's go, uh, which is a command that he knows is come. Okay. Uh, give me another animal handling check with advantage after you use the command. Twelve. <laughs> with that, you're able to get him into the water, and you get down in the water with him, and he becomes more comfortable, and then uh, you're able to go down into this portal. So, as all of you go down into the water, and you know, the, the water's not too deep here, it's only about four feet, I think it would probably only be maybe over Talia's head, but as you reach this shimmering pool of light, you're going to feel a tingle as your hand goes into it as you try to swim down and you crest this the shimmering light and as soon as you you cross it you're going to feel like the entire your entire world like basically switch upside down so now what was down is now up oh dear Stay yeah, by. Fuck up the horses. So, you are going to cross through this portal, and then you are going to see like this this dim light above you as you cross through. And as you swim up or like crawl along the uh, the bank there underwater, um, you are going to um, break the surface of this water. The water here is probably only about four deep on this end as well. The horses jump up and try to grab um, some footing and they're able to get up on the ground here and start swimming uh, for the shore. But as your head pokes out of the water, you're going to look around and here it is almost night. There's, it seems the sun is down and there is this purplish red light on the horizon and everything here is bathed in like this sunset light you look around and the bank is probably only about 15 feet from the uh, the portal here where I'm pinging can you see it <laughs> yep the upper northeastern world whole thing yeah so um, the closest shore is probably only about 15 feet away so you don't have any trouble making it there and the horses and Abbott um, also have no problem making it to the bank because they want out of this water. Alright, let's uh, get away from the portal, try to cover our tracks a bit and uh, take a good long rest. Yeah? Why are we taking a good long rest? We just got here, let's go. Well, we also got beat all to hell by those elves slash wall. I mean, we just rested. Why are we resting again? Well, okay. Then let's that was a short rest. Go a bit. I'm just saying that we shouldn't rest in an alien realm where we have no idea what anything is. You don't need 
to worry too much. I'll protect you for now. Okay, let's find the boots. Um, hey, let, let's ask our statue which way we need to go to find the boots. Unless there's something really obvious, like a massive temple that says boots here. Do directions still work the same way in the Feywild? Uh, you don't know. Can I roll a nature check? I mean, you still... What? You can roll... Yeah, go ahead and roll it. From board, <laughs> okay, maybe? never mind. Don't worry about it. I rolled a natural one. I don't even want to know. <laughs> yeah, you don't know shit. What kind of question were you planning on asking, Lewis? Uh, which way is the... Are the boots? Uh, do you... Wait... As an elf, do you know if like direction works in the same way? Is there still like a north, south, east, and west? That's a good question. So, uh, as you're asking this, everybody give me a perception check. Eight. Nine. Or passive of sixteen. I don't know. Oh man. Fifteen. I I rolled a one on perception. Sixteen. Alright, so let's see. Vic and Juliet, while you're having this discussion about um, directions and the Feywild and what questions you may want to ask the, the statue, you are going to see some stirring and rippling in the water over here. I don't see over here. Are you pinging something? Yeah. Southwest? Northwest? Uh, south. South. Okay. And around that time that you notice, you are going to see this figure pop out of the water and look right at you. And I'm going to need everybody to place themselves on the map and roll initiative. Um, you're going to notice this figure um, rise out of the water where you just came from. And it appears to be female in figure. It has this light green grayish skin and green bluish hair. And it is going to look directly at your party. And you're going to see a snarl. And is everybody in initiative? Yep. Yep. I think she's friendly. <laughs> All right. So this figure in the water is going to go first. It is going to start moving toward you. And then you are going to see it start making some hand motions and muttering something and I need Juliet, Talia, Vic, you four to give me a wisdom save. That was only three. Did you mean to include Alexander? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Alexander, Vic, Talia, and Juliet. Seven. Fourteen. A literal one. <laughs> Got a four. Oh my goodness. Alright. Two crit fails. So, everyone except for Talia is going to hear the whispering of this woman in the lake. You're going to think that, you know what, it might be a really good idea for all of you to attack Nifron and Alunidas. Is she charming me? Yes. You have advantage on Yeah, I have advantage on Okay. Let me roll. Oh, much better. All Must right. be nice. You, oh, uh, also, you have an aura, don't you? I do. Mm -hmm. What does your aura do? I feel like it gives bonuses Saving to saves. Throws. Yeah. Yep, to everybody within 10 feet. I think that's everybody. Uh, oh, 10 feet. Whoops. I did. Sorry. Oh, maybe it's 30. I, I don't know. It's I know level 18. Sorry. I only read uh, the number at the end. Oh, okay. so it's 10 feet. Uh, everybody is within 10 feet. We get a bonus to our rolls equal to your charisma up. Charisma modifier. And... Yep, you get a plus 3. Okay, so we all get a plus 3. I don't think that changes much. Nope. It doesn't help at all. <laughs> so that is going to end the nymph's turn. Uh, next up is Vic. 
I'm going to cast, I'm going to bless Juliet, Talia, and Nifron. I'll call. Um, they will get a, they can use a 1d4 to any roll, except for damage. Mm-hmm. So saving throws, and attacks, and ability checks, you can use uh, an extra 1d4. Okay. So is that your, mm-hmm. is that an action? Mm-hmm. All right, so that's um, one action, it's yep. a concentration spell. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, and... Do you want to move? I'm going to go ahead and move. Okay. A bit towards the water. This is uh, right on the edge, right? Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to end my turn. Okay, next up is Luna. Okay, I was trying to look up the ring. Um, Don't think it allows me free action in the water? Just lets me breathe? Correct. Okay. Um... It, it would still be difficult terrain. Well, that would not be a problem. Not really. So I'm going to turn on my ring. Is that an action? Uh, it would be a bonus action. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my ring, and I'm just going to go into the water and attack her. Okay. Okay. And first attack at 13. Uh, that's gonna miss. Um, and second attack. 24. That'll hit. For 9 damage. Um, I've already used my bonus, so I can't do flurry of blows or anything. But I think I can try to... Yes, I can try to stun her. I'll spend chi point to for stunning strike. Um, she has a con save. So that's going to be DC 14. Uh, to be not stunned. That's a 17. Darn. All right. And let's see. That's it for my turn. All right. Next up is Alexander. It's my time to shine. So I am now obligated to attack either Nightfron or Droliet, right? Um, you don't Nightfron know. Nightfron or th- Alunidas. Uh, you don't know the third. You just said. Oh, yeah. Nightfron. Okay. Yeah. So. You would have to attack Nifron, or at, she said specifically uh, Nifron and Linodos, didn't she? Oh yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. I, got mixed up. I uh, said uh, Juliet, Talia, and Nifron. Oh, well, so Juliet's charmed. charmed. Juliet and Alexander are charmed, but Talia is not. Oh. So she would say the ones I who aren't, around. aren't charmed. Charmed, yeah. I'm, I get confused. Yep. So you can attack, uh, actually let me roll, that's a four, so attack Nifron. Got it. I will uh, take up my crossbow and uh, shoot it right at Nifron. 19 to hit. Oh, that hits. Nine damage. Uh, he does not look happy. I have four uh, temporary HP. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. Uh, Juliet, you're up. All right, uh, Juliet casts Magic Missile at Nifron. Kevin, should you roll the um, the target at random? Uh, actually, I will, and that's uh, a Lunados, so cast Magic Missile uh, at a Lunados. Uh, yeah. I'll cast that. So I'm going to take eight damage. I uh, yes. Uh, and I can't deflect missiles if they're magic. <laughs> All right, that'll in your turn, Talia. You're up. All right, uh, Talia is going to move. Do they get saving throws to try and end the charm effect on their turns or something? That's a good question. I don't think they do. Oh no, no, actually they do. So, Alexander and Juliet, give me a wisdom save. Seven fail. Pass. Fail. fail. Nine fail. But they have yep. blessing. Uh, I guess we can roll 1d4 if that matters, yep. but I doubt it. If you want. Eight. Actually, fail. actually no. Pass. It won't help you in either case. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Talia, you're up. So, Talia moved here. Um, and she is going to throw a dagger at the nymph. 
Uh, you can't. You're currently under the effects of charm, so you either have to attack. No, I'm not. Or... I passed the wisdom save. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna throw a dagger at the nymph. Okay. <laughs> Seventeen. Uh, that hits. Uh, sneak attack, and then throw my offhand dagger. Uh, eighteen. Oh. All right. Uh, so that's a total of how much? Uh, fifteen, nineteen damage. Wow. She does not have advantage right now. But there's an enemy within five feet of it, so I can still sneak attack. Uh, is that going to end your turn? Uh, yep, that, that ends my turn. All right, next up is Nifron. He is going to go charging into this water and dash, but that, that he can make it here to flank, but um, that took uh, everything he had. But Doesn't no, I'll take that back. He's bonus got as dash as a bonus. As a, yeah, so he's going to attack the nip. <laughs> this is going to be ugly. He won't get his offhand attack, though. Uh, first attack is a 12. That's going to miss. The second attack is a crit. 12 points of damage plus sneak attack is 18. And he's going to roll the crit table. That is a 13. Not in the face. Your attack is so intimidating that one of the target can not take an action for one turn. But that's helpful. <laughs> Which next up is the nymph. <laughs> she is basically stunned and can't take the, her turn. So next up is Vic. I'm gonna go. By the way, what's the weather? Direct sunlight or? Uh, it is like it's sun, like kind of like dusk here. So there's no direct sunlight. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rush to the nymph and attack her. I do have. Um, Cloak of the Manta Ray, so that's like 60 feet in water. Okay. Um, roll the 18. Uh, that is. And hits. I'm gonna add uh, spiritual weapon on top of that as a bonus action. Okay. Let me find a little. Uh, what you want your spiritual weapon to be? It's going to be uh, like a very dark smoke and doing um, spear that pierces. Okay. Uh, 16. Hits. Alright, um, so where do you want to place it? Uh, parallel to me. Okay. So, like, right there? Uh, like, left of the nymph. I just think she means, uh, flanking. Flanking. Opposite. Yeah, flanking. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you don't get flank with it because it's not considered a creature. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, 16. Did, did that hit? Uh, 16 does not hit. 18 did? Uh, the 18, your attack did hit. That's um, 11 damage, I think. Oh, that, was the, that looks like the damage of the spiritual weapon rather than the great sword. Right. So I think on your character sheet, you should be able to click on damage below your weapon. Uh, oh, okay. So six. Oh, that's awful law. Wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, and do you No, that was get... a six to hit rather than six for damage. She'll need to... No, she got an 18 to hit. The six was for... Oh, I see what you're that saying. That was another hit roll. Yeah. Oh, hmm. Wait, is it uh, like this? Does it work? There you go. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, okay, 11. Again, wow. Uh, Alright, so um, don't you get two attacks, and then isn't spiritual weapon a bonus action? I, yep, that's actually true. Yeah, that is true. I, I did roll a six the second time I rolled for a hit, so... Okay, yeah, so we'll take one. that one. So, uh, you will need to roll a... Roll me a d20. 13. 13. That is expeditious retreat. You must move your move speed away from the target. Oh, well. Um, so... Well, you're currently... With that cloak, you're not impeded by water. So, right? That's not difficult terrain for you? Yep, and it's also uh, 60 feet. Your move speed 60 feet? 
in water. Yes. Oh. Okay. So you'll just move. Um, so that'll be about a third of your distance to get to land, and then you've got to move your speed. So we'll just say it's here at the end of the map, right here. Okay. So that should be it for your yep. turn. Yes. All right. Next up is Luna. Okay. Um, I'm just going to beat this nymph to death. Seems like the thing to do. You can try. 25. Uh, that hits. For 11 damage. Okay. And 19. Uh, that'll hit too. For 9 more damage. Okay. And then I think I'll go ahead and do Flurry of Blows. 24. For 8 more damage. And I think I'll try and I'll go ahead and take away her reactions. Just in case. And 24 for 6 more damage. This time I'm going to... Wow, there's not a whole lot I can do with that except take away a reaction. I'll go ahead and try to knock her prone. See okay. Happens. Does she get a save against uh, she has the a dex reaction? Save. Nope, no save for that, but she does get a dex save against being knocked prone. DC 14. Alright, that is a 16. Okay, so she's not knocked prone. But she did take a total of 28, 34 damage. And Ouch. that's it for my turn. Uh, Alexander, you are up. It's my time to shine. Who am I hitting, Kevin? Uh, Talia. Sounds good to me. I shoot my cross. I'm going to shoot my short bow or Talia. Or, or my front or limit up. Uh, no, Alexander's up in the order. Uh, no. The original command was to attack either Nifron or Lunadas. Talia okay. is not included. In... I think he, he uh, retconned it to non-charm people. Yeah. Right. God, okay. Uh, um, I, I, will, I, I will roll a uh, random person. But... So that is a... Yeah, that would still be Talia. Uh, ten but that would still miss. be a 10 to hit. Yeah, that's going to miss. Pass turn. Uh, Juliet, you're up. Uh, you are going to attack Vic. All right. Uh, magic missile upcast by last spell slot. Eleven, uh, thirteen damage. All right. Next up is uh, Vic. Take that thirteen damage, and Talia, you're up. I'm gonna throw a knife at the nymph. Okay. Actually, multiple knives. Uh, 26. That hits. Nice. Sneak attack. And offhand. Uh, that hit, uh, does not hit. Oh, wait, so that's still 14 damage. Okay. Uh, next up is Nifron. He's gonna attack with his rapier and his psi. All three miss. Ew. Uh, next up is the water nymph. You are going to see her cast something, and then you're going to see the water behind you, Alunados, start, like, bubbling and moving. It, I, it wasn't me, it was someone else. I, I, I <laughs> don't think it And, uh, this large water elemental is going to appear behind you as it, uh, moves up out of the water. And it is going to attack you, Alunidas. Uh, that is a 18 and a 23. Both of those are going to hit. All right, so that is going to be a total of 29 points of damage. And I'm down. Yikes. So do we need to rest? <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Vic. Yep. I'm gonna, um, hmm. If I go into water when I have 25 feet, if how you're able far to move, can I go? You should be able to move back. Yeah, you'll be able to move back. Because you're basically. Anyway, I can up. reach. Um. Anyway, I can reach, um. I'd say you'll be able to hit. Near our down guy? Yeah, you'll be able to reach him. Okay. Mm hmm. Because your movement is basically doubled once you hit the water. Okay. Gonna move here. And yes. Gonna. Um. Hmm. I'm gonna use uh. Neon. Hmm. 
They're gonna use lay on hands on him. Okay. How many hit points? You For get? um, ten. All right, Alina, you get ten hit points. Yay. And so that's um, an action in your movement. Cast um shield of faith on Alina Das. Ooh, thank you. Nice. It's my bonus action. Though, um, Bless is, uh, Is Shield of Faith a concentration? Um, yes. Okay, so then Bless goes away. And that's my turn. And we forgot to roll to save against the charm again. I was just gonna oh, do yeah. it at the start of my turn, since I forgot about it and it doesn't matter until my turn. Yep. That's it. Okay. I want to put a little indicator up here for Shield of Faith on Leno. Okay. All right, next up is Leno. All right, I am going to um, do my steppy disengage thing for a chi point. I'm going not the disengage, but the, the, the thing that makes me hard to hit. And I'm dodge. going to fullness of body. Yes, dodge. Um, to give myself... 18 hit points back. Okay. And that will be my turn. All right, Alexander, give me a uh, wisdom save. I rolled a 13. Uh, it's not enough. And uh, who am I attacking, Kevin? Uh, stand by. You are attacking a Lunados. 11 to hit. You have disadvantage. But 11 would miss, so. 11 to hit. You miss. I pass. Well, I need to roll my check again. Seven and eleven when you do anything, nope. so I fail. Uh, Juliet, give me a wisdom save. Eleven. Nope. All right, who am I attacking? Uh, you are attacking Talia. All right. Waltz right up and cast Green Flame Blade. That'll give me an attack, and it'll do extra damage if I hit. So 20 hit you, Talia? Yeah. So that's nine points of damage. And one point of fire damage as well. And that is it for Juliet. So what's it feel like, Talia, that you know this adoptive mother figure that you've had comes strolling up to you and just cuts you with the glaive? It 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 burns. Literally. Indeed. Uh, next Don't up. Don't forget your wisdom save. Oh yeah, wisdom save. <laughs> Natural twenty. There we go. So you are no longer charmed. Oh, oh. I think you need to take an action to apologize to Talia. <laughs> Don't worry, Juliet will. Talia is gonna look at Juliet and be like, "What the fuck, dude?" All right, you're up, Talia. All right, I'm gonna throw a dagger at the stupid nymph. Twenty-four. And that hits. Sneak attack plus my offhand dagger. That's another 24. So a total of 22 damage. Alright, this water nymph is looking rough. Next up is Nifron. Attack with his rapier inside. That's a 27, a 21, and a 21. All three hit. Talia, you throw these daggers and you see them hit this, this nymph in the water and it starts staggering back into the water and you see it try to like try to duck beneath the water and get away and Nifron's like what do you think y'all going and then he is going to stab down into the back of this water nymph three times with his rapier inside and then you're just going to see this blackish greenish blood start filling this pond as it um goes lifeless and sinks below the water. Uh, next up is the water elemental. It screams out, no, mini. Uh, at this point, it is not being controlled and is going to start running amok. Uh, it's going to see you and Lunados right in front of it. Um, so it is going to do a multi-attack. That is a 10 and a 12. That's going to miss. Mm-hmm. Did you roll disadvantage? You might have gotten a crit fail. Uh, sure. Nope. Aw. Uh, well, always 
it's worth a shot. Uh, next up is Vic. I'm gonna attack him twice. Uh, 19 and 11. Uh, the 19 will hit. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Divine Smite. Nice. For a level 1 spell slot. So, 8 points of slashing. And... 8 for Divine Smite. So, 16. All right. What's your Divine Smite look like? My Divine Smite, instead of being a radiating beam of light, it's the opposite. It's simply a shadowy, musky, like, tendrils that goes through the blade when I attack. Spooky. Gets covered with spiders. They jump onto the target. Totally <laughs> Ew, spiders! <sighs> All right, is that it for your turn? Uh, you still yes. got the spiritual weapon. Oh, right. That is, um, wait, Divine Smite, it's not a bonus action? Oh, actually, that no, that's that's a... Um, that's uh, hmm. You can just dump the Divine Smite into anything when you hit. It's not oh. an action or a bonus action. But uh, is spiritual weapon concentration? No, uh, it's just one minute duration. Okay, so you're able to attack with spiritual weapon too. Uh, fifteen. Uh, that's gonna hit. That's six extra damage. So that's um, sixteen plus six, twenty-two. All right. So you slash down with your sword, and as you slash through this water elemental, some of the the water is parted as the black tendrils come off of your blade and you can see it flinch back some and then you take your hand and motion for the spiritual weapon to come in and you see the spear dart through the air and through this water elemental mm -hmm. uh, next up uh, do you want to move Vic, Anna uh, whoop uh, I didn't press uh, to talk and uh, nope I'm gonna stay here. Oh, so you could probably move up and flank. Oh, yep. I remember last campaign I played, we did not have uh, flanking, so I kind of forgot. Mm. Alright, move one up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you could have to move right here to flank. Oh, oh. it shows I don't know flanking rules. <laughs> yeah, you have to be directly across <laughs> okay. from. Um, you have to be able to draw a line um, through the enemy to another player. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. So uh, Thank you. Corners are opposite sides. Yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, now Luno no longer needs to move to get the flanking, so he will stay right where he is, and he will strive to beat the ever-loving crap out of this water element. That's a 22. That hits. For 10 damage, uh, 27. That hits. For 6 more damage, and a chi point for Flurry of Blows. Uh, 24 for 9 more damage. That hits. Let's take away its reactions. And a crit! Nice. <laughs> um, for 13 more damage, um, let's spend another chi point for Stunning Strike. So it gets a DC 14 con save. Uh, that's a 12. Uh, so it sounds like you failed and is stunned. Okay. Okay, and now my, uh, crit table roll. 15. Uh, that is disarming strike. Target drops weapon, but it doesn't have a weapon. Ah, uh, well. In any event, it is stunned. So it didn't need to do these reactions, but, uh, 16 plus 9 is 25, plus 13 is 38 total damage and nice stopped. uh alexander you're up you are going to attack doesn't the charm fall off when the nymph dies oh yeah that's right so you're no longer charmed what a time to be alive <laughs> so this nymph dies and your head clears and you shake your head and you're like what the hell was i just doing wait where did that water elemental come from <laughs> All right, what are you doing? 
I guess we need to figure out where it's safe, where uh, the elves can't just go through the fade portal to get to us. Well, we're, we're still killing. Okay. Yeah, you're still counting in combat. Somebody has not been paying attention. Alexander. That's me. Are you attacking the water elemental? I thought the elemental was dead. No, the it's nymph still... is dead. The elemental is going oh. muck. I'm a goofball. Yeah, I'm going to attack it. Sorry, I... I, uh... I just don't have a turn for the last, like, five turns, so I just kind of, like, zoned out. I will attack the fire, the water elemental. With the crit to hit. Nice. Four on regular damage, and I'm going to add an extra d6. Uh, so it's going to be nine in total, and then I'll roll a 20 for the crit chart. Two on crit chart. That is compromised defense. Target takes negative one penalty to AC. That's nice. All right, yep. next... Uh, Juliet, done. All right. Uh, Juliet is going to drop her weapon and just hold her hands up to her mouth and, oh my God, Talia, Talia, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be Juliet's turn. <laughs> Given she's out of spell slots and can't reach the elemental anyway. Oh, <laughs> you don't have a ranged weapon. You oh, I do. Water. It's just completely useless. You could always get in the water. <laughs> I mean, I, I could, or I could role play. I don't know. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> Talia, you're just up. She's going to be like, we'll talk about this later and move over here. That's where and I'm she's going to cast Toll the Dead. Nice. Oh, for a two. Uh, that's DC 13 Wisdom Six. E- yeah, but I believe, hold on, let me pull up Toll the Dead. It filled its Wisdom Six. I think it actually it. has to hit. Okay. No, it's not a. Uh, oh no! A creature you can see must pass Wisdom save or take damage. If it's missing any hit points, the damage is one d12 necrotic. Uh, otherwise, it's one d8. It increases by one die when you reach fifth, eleventh, and seventeenth level. So, so it would have to pass its d- Wisdom save, and if it doesn't, then it takes sixteen damage. Okay, so it takes sixteen damage. And then that was my action, so my bonus action is going to be to throw my offhand dagger. That's a nine, so I'm guessing that's not going to hit. Nope. All right. Wait, is this stunned? Mm. It is. Does that mean that I get advantage on it? It is. Uh, I mean, it's not stun- stunned. It just can't take an action. Oh, okay. Um, um, well, it's a stunning strike once per turn on a hit. Oh, it's your key point to stun. I'm sorry, I thought that you got that from a uh, um, crit chart effect. Yeah, no, my crit would have been to make it drop its weapon. <laughs> okay, so she gets advantage on it. On the so that's attack. an 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. I'll do my sneak attack for a total of 9 extra damage. Alright. Uh, next up is Nifron. He's going to run over here, splashing through the water to attack this water elemental. That is a two 13s and a 24. The 24 is going to hit for nine if he'd points. If on the south side, he'd be flanking, right? No, he can't flank with anybody at this point because there's nobody in melee range in the water except for Lunadas and Vic. So I'm saying that if he stayed on the south side next to a Lunadas. No, it doesn't work then. that way. Okay. He wouldn't be directly across. Uh, next up is the water elemental. It is stunned. going to turn and attack Nipron. It's stunned. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, next up is Vic. Gotta do the same trick again. Oh, that's a crit. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> with Divine Smite, by the way. Okay, um, so roll that damage. That's... Um... 13. 23. The necrotic. Plus divine smite. Do I double the divine smite? Uh, yeah. Anything you roll is doubled. So the slashing damage is doubled and divine smite is doubled. And then you would add your uh, Ten strength necrotic. bonus. So that's um, 26 plus 6 plus 10. 42 damage. Uh, um, no, it's 13 no? plus 6 plus 10. Plus, yeah, that would be it. So 29. You, you don't multiply it to 13 by 2. Oh, 13 okay. Is the, 
that one, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And a spiritual weapon. Do I roll that again? Uh, or? no you don't, because uh, that was enough to kill this thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what's it look like when you take this water elemental out? I give it a stern look, thinking to myself, how does a water elemental live without a head? Does it actually have a head? With a single swipe, I cut off what I assume what is head, grab it with my hand, and take a zip. Trophy? Well, you, um, you can't really thirsty. because the, the water basically, like, <laughs> as you grab it, uh, flows through your fingers and back it down into the water. That's disappointing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so that is going to take you out of combat. And I think okay. that's probably a pretty good place to end it right there. I think so. Yep, thank you. Yay! It's very fun yeah. being here. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Yep, of course. Thank you very much. I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome, we'll do it again next week. If you have me, thank you. Well, we'll have to take a double secret probation vote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you there's guys. a three-phase like interview. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor, give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. Do you have an idea to make the podcast better? Tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. Welcome to the Conley Inn and Stables. Located in the most exciting part of Conley, we're a short carriage ride from the city's most popular attractions. Whether you're looking for music or a play, nightlife or high-class shopping, we're located near it all. Our palatial suites can accommodate any discerning traveler, and our service is legendary. We also offer amenities such as an indoor heated pool, a spa, fitness center, laundry, and 24-hour room service. Are you a traveler with business with the council? Ask for our special business rate. Make sure to sign up for our gold club and get exclusive access to our finest rooms, and the 10th stay is free. We also honor Triple B Travelers Club membership discounts. Carnley Inn and Stables, we're at the center of it all. The music you heard on this episode was Anguish, Four Origins, and The Descent by Kevin McLeod in Competite.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.